Okay. Ah, this mic is on. Okay, now I switch to English because I was told I have to moderate in English and actually it's the first time for me. Uh, my name is Carsten Lohmeyer. I'm blogging uh, at lousypennies.de. Uh, <laughs> perhaps some people know the blog and I have the real pleasure to show to you, to present Gaga <laughs> from Serbia. Uh, she told me that's the best way to pronounce her name because I c uh, really uh, couldn't make it. And uh, you're talking. If I can say Kirsten, yeah. you can say Germanovic. Uh, uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. <laughs> and she will be talking about something very, very interesting for me. I think I love the title of your talk uh, Make Block Not War. And uh, actually, you just told me you, you're now in, uh, in lead of a blogging platform with more than 400,000 blogs. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Well, that's a huge experience for, for me and for my company because, you know, you have so many uh, specific individuals. Uh, they have their own needs. They have um, specific uh, circumstances. Environment is not very... Um, encouraging towards uh, freedom of speech and that kind of stuff. So it's it's a quite a challenge, believe me. Okay, now everyone has a chance to sit down and get that exciting speech. And uh, you you get it. Uh, we get it in Madonna style. I heard, yeah. Please, you know, because we are not singing karaoke <laughs> today. But later on, maybe we'll see. <laughs> okay, the stage is yours. Thank you, Karsten. Uh, hello, dear friends, fellow bloggers. Uh, my name is Dragana and I am a blogger. Uh, I blog for more than uh, eight years. Uh, I create corporate blogs for my clients. And actually, I love blogs. Um, you know, the uh, country where I come from is very specific. Um, we have... Um, that's not very, uh, how, to, how to put it in the best way. Um, freedom of press is endangered in many ways. So uh, being a blogger is very challenging. Um, and last year, um, as part of my business strategy, but uh, as well as part of my passion toward bloggers, uh, we acquired three of the most significant blog platforms in, in, in the region of former Yugoslavia. Uh, I will call that region XU uh, 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 during my speech, uh, if you don't mind. Um, and now we have a um, strong, strong base of uh, bloggers we manage and, and work with. Um, and that's something I will, uh, I will talk to you uh, a little more uh, during my presentation. Uh, I come from Serbia, uh, from the very heart of Balkans. And uh, it's very challenging to live in country uh, characterized by conflicts, this might sound, sound familiar to you, transition, low level of human rights, um, and one of the worst inflations world uh, ever known. We live uh, in uh, countries, six small countries, this region uh, uh, exists of six small countries, with um, 22 million people. It's, if I'm correct, uh, four times um, uh, less than, for example, Germany. So uh, these are things you might associate with this region and with my country. War, war crimes, refugees, low level of human rights and, you know, different, not very cool, not very cool things uh, that unfortunately um, is part of our international image. But fortunately, we have many good stories to share with you, and that's something that is, um, gives uh, us hope and motivates us to work harder in order to change things uh, in our countries and in the region and uh, in Europe uh, at the end. For example, you might know um, this guy, Nikola Tesla, the greatest geek who ever lived. He is from our region. Um, we can thank him for wi wireless, for example, and many other, uh, many other things. My region um, is famous also uh, thanks to Novak Djokovic, ATP uh, 
and a one for years. And this guy is not just uh, the best athlete in the world. Uh, he is also humanitarian. Uh, he is a national ambassador for UNICEF for years. Uh, and he is helping kids uh, with early childhood education and, and development. Uh, this guy is also pretty famous, and he is a humanitarian worker as well, Vlade Divac. Uh, and he cares for kids, uh, especially refugees, not just from our countries, but worldwide. Um, then uh, Ivo Andrić, our no Nobel Prize uh, writer, one of the famous in the region of Southeast Europe. Uh, Mother Teresa, for example, she was born in Skopje, uh, capital of... Uh, former Yugoslav Republic, Macedonia. And this is quite interesting, I think. Uh, this guy, his name uh, was Dusan Popov, um, and he was our spy, actually triple spy, during uh, the World War II. Uh, and there are sufficient proofs that this guy, Dusan, uh, was an inspiration for Ian Fleming's 007 agent. So maybe when you think about uh, former Yugoslavia or my region, you will uh, you will think about uh, 007 um, as well. But there are many, many stories in between. Between war, between crimes, bet between, you know, uh, flawed democracies and so on, and beautiful stories and examples we have at the other side. There are many shades of grey, and uh, believe it or not, bloggers are filling those shades uh, each and every day for years. Um, I would like to give you just a few information about, about context where we live in and where bloggers are blogging. Uh, just a quick note for you, uh, there are estimations that we have um, around a million blogs in a uh, former Yugoslav region, which is quite high. Just on our B-Blog network, there are 400,000 bloggers. So for countries uh, counting 22 million people of population, that's quite huge. And I think you will understand why we are um, seeking and relying on blogosphere uh, that much. A few things about our uh, environment. We use internet heavily, and we rely on internet not just uh, in order to communicate, to, to have fun, like, like uh, in normal countries people do, but we use internet as a democratic tool, and uh, lacking all other uh, tools to, to uh, enhance and to develop democracies, uh, internet is almost um, always uh, the only thing we have. Uh, then, uh, regarding freedom of press, which is, um, again, very interesting for, for our story today, we cannot say that we are proud uh, on our ranks, uh, except Slovenia and Croatia, and those are countries uh, in European Union, you know, so uh, it's, it's quite different uh, over there. But as you can see in Macedonia, for example, a uh, country where uh, my Kateri mother Teresa was born, um, they are 417th on that, on that, on that rank list. Um, except freedom of press, which is endangered for, 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 for many, many years, economic freedom is um, also endangered, and we cannot be proud uh, of this rank uh, as well. As you can see, our countries are, cannot manage economic development very good, and we have problems with foreign investments and, and so on. And then we have Corruption Perception Index, which is, again, very high. Uh, you know, when you have endangered freedom of press and when you have uh, low uh, economic freedom, then it's obvious we can expect to have uh, this uh, very high Corruption Perception Index as well. And regarding democracy, you know, um, our countries are famous for very bad history, uh, especially during the uh, last couple of decades. Uh, we had those civil wars um, and, and painful history, and that's something that is, you know, we suffer from that, but we have that kind of image, and we have politicians who live in that kind of environment, and um, it's not easy. And we know that, it, that it's hard, and that's why we rely on blogosphere uh, to share ideas, to, to, to promote, to preach, to advocate all social values we need in order to develop our uh, small societies. And how important blogs are uh, in our region? 
Our bloggers blog about different topics. They blog frequently, they blog heavily, they blog for more than 15 years. They express what they stand for. Um, you know, it's not easy to live uh, in countries like, like ours. Um, being good is not good enough. Uh, being brave is not brave enough. And being determined, it's not determined enough. So they are trying to send a word, they are trying to, to, you know, to change things within their uh, uh, personal social circle and then to spread the word uh, further in their countries uh, and so on. And thanks to the bloggers, uh, we are empowered and we can hear uh, different stories because bloggers are the only community that question, that, that are thinking, that are sharing ideas you cannot find in press, for example, which is, which is quite strange. And um, they, em they are empowering their social circle and then they are empowering uh, our society in general. Um, as Pr Professor Pinker explained, um, and we can apply this model uh, into our blogosphere as well, uh, we have at one side, bloggers who uh, share their own thoughts um, and they have that individual knowledge and individual power. Thanks to their shared ideas, we um, receive that knowledge and at that point it becomes mutual power. And we are stronger in so many ways. I will share a few stories with you regarding how important and how significant each idea shared via blogs is for our societies, vulnerable societies. Um, our network uh, consists of uh, 400,000 blogs in uh, different countries. One of them is Croatia, a uh, member of European Union. Then we have Bosnia, blogs in Bosnia. Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, hybrid um, state, uh, very specific in so many ways. And then Serbia, uh, in very heart of the, the ex-U, former U uh, region. Uh, and we have many bloggers from Slovenia, from Macedonia, Montenegro. And these people, they blog for more than 10, 12, 15 years uh, in case of uh, Bosnia. They communicate with each other, they uh, share their ideas, they um, question their states and governments and so on. And from last year, we are trying to somehow help them to gather uh, them at one, not just blog platform, but blog social network. That's something we are trying to do at the moment. But um, we started from uh, survey we conducted last year. Um, that's first regional survey about regional blogosphere, about former Yugoslav blogosphere, uh, because we wanted to understand uh, who our bloggers are, are wh why they are blogging, um, how they feel about their blogs, and uh, of course, which consequences they suffer from. Um, and this was a very big uh, survey with more than 70 questions in 10 different areas. And I will share a few of the most significant findings from that survey exclusively uh, for you um, here in Rock, at Rock the Blog conference. Um, we named that survey, Bloggers, How Are You? Because I really think that no one have ever asked our bloggers how they feel about their, their blog and how they feel about uh, overall uh, online environment. And few, few, just a few things about our bloggers, uh, who they are. Um, we have young blogosphere. We have, uh, the most bloggers are in category 31 to 40, um, but we have um, around 25%. Uh, one in four bloggers are from the category 25 to 30. Um, we have little more female bloggers than, than male bloggers, and we have uh, well-educated, highly univer univer bloggers with university degrees, which is, which is interesting. I will tell you why. We have eight out of ten bloggers with university degree, uh, and for example, in my country, um, from general population, with university degree, they are just 15% of population. So bloggers are, are well educated um, and they are mostly females and they are in category from 31 to 40. Uh, but as you can see, we have 
around 20%, 21% of high school bloggers, which is, which is quite interesting and very important, um, meaning that we will have strong and we will have uh, vibrant blogosphere in years to come. Um, I know that uh, most of people uh, understand blogs as, as something that is passé or not cool or whatever, but when you have 20% of bloggers who are high school bloggers um, debating about, um, um, okay, gaming and music and that kind of stuff, but also writing poetry and uh, discussing some science uh, issues and so on, uh, that means a lot. So. Facebook is cool, Snapchat as well, Twitter and so on and so on. But if you want to make a big change, if you really want to be part of the community for a long, long time, then you will use blogs. And our uh, even high school uh, kids, boys and girls, uh, are using blogs to share their, uh, their word. And that's important for us. Um, then we asked our bloggers... What, why did they start blogging? And you know, um, our bloggers are givers. Uh, they started their blog in order to share what they know, to share their experiences, to share their impressions, to help other people. So as givers, um, they are so interesting and so passionate. Then they blog because they love writing. So you have a blogosphere where people are givers and want to share what they know. And at the same time, they love to write. As you will see, um, online visibility and online reputation is somehow important for them. Uh, but in the US, for example, this is the most uh, important reason for starting blogging. In our region, that's uh, not the case. We blog because we want to share what we know. Then, regarding um, satisfactions uh, and uh, what blog actually means to a blogger, we received different interesting answers. And first of all, personal satisfaction. Of course, network, some uh, business opportunities, and so on. But again, bloggers as givers in, in former Yugoslav region, uh, they're main satisfaction is personal satisfaction, so blog is very personal uh, to them. But again, many shades of grey, as I mentioned. Blogging has also brought to our bloggers enemies and opponents, problems at work, then anonymous threats, different types of pressure from not just online community families, closest ones, but from companies and from co-workers and even from state and government institutions. So around 5% of all bloggers experienced some kind of pressure from government and, and public institutions. And that's something that, that we need to change as B-Blog Network, as network of bloggers, thanks to your experience, thanks to this kind of events, thanks to uh, different projects we are, we are starting. Also, they are not feel they, they, they are not free and do not feel free to speak out. Uh, that's something important for me personally because I'm very passionate about the blogosphere. Half of the bloggers uh, in former Yugoslavia believe that freedom of expression is endangered and they also believe that bloggers tend to face this particular type of pressure uh, more often. Our bloggers, one out of five, do not feel free to write or to contribute on their own blogs. So, um, country with, with poor freedom of pr countries with poor freedom of press and low democracy uh, index, then countries with low economic uh, index and high corruption index, uh, countries, those countries have significant blogosphere, but bloggers are not free to share their opinion and to speak out about things that are important for them. But still, they are here, and still they are trying to do their best. They suffer from different consequences because of their writing. Nearly four out of five bloggers with four or more years of writing claim to have suffered some type of negative consequences because of uh, things they write. And the longer they blog, the more often they become victims. Um, 
and that's something important for us, meaning that uh, although they are uh, serious bloggers with a strong reputation, they suffer different consequences, not just from online community, but also from different um, government institutions or even corp corporations and companies. You know, that's, that's quite strange. I know that you will talk about corporate blogging. Uh, I was creator of uh, three of the most popular corporate blogs in my region as well. And I truly believe that we need to connect companies and bloggers um, and to share the voice about the company from that native advertising point of view. But uh, in our countries, for example, Companies and bloggers are not friends, uh, and that's a problem. Because if I say something that is not very positive towards any company, I can suffer different pressures. Um, I experienced to, to receive uh, a note from a uh, from, uh, um, corporate director of a, of a huge company and she said if you uh, publish that post about our company and things we are doing you will never ever work for us or with us you know um, I am an agency person I love uh, I love blogs and but but I live from my uh, out of my job and my agency and that was you know that was not cool and she was right I published and uh, I, I, have, I, I, have, I have never done anything with them but you know that's the fact. You choose to be a good guy in your life and you suffer some consequences or you not. That's something you will do and decide. Uh, what I want is to empower bloggers to make this kind of decision I make and to help them um, to, to establish maybe more economical independence in their lives in order to be able to share their voice uh, freely. What do they fight for? Our bloggers, of course, since we have endangered freedom of press, fight for transparency, government spending, and then, you know, different forms of corruption and, and that kind of stuff. They fight for, uh, for, for press itself. Can you believe it? They are not just bloggers, they are uh, citizen journalists. And you can read from blogs things you can never find in, in our print magazines or, or uh, TV outlets and so on. So actually they have that role and they use that role to inform their community and wider public about important things in their cities, in their, uh, in their country or region. They also blog in order to help to uh, different endangered uh, categories. Uh, kids who need to go f to a surgery uh, abroad or uh, people endangered uh, during natural, dis natural disasters like floods we had a couple of years ago. And of course, uh, since we have that high corruption index and low freedom of, of, of uh, speech and press, uh, Bloggers need to fight for consumers as well. So we have them to spread the word about bad companies, bad uh, corporate practices and ideas. And thanks to them, uh, we have different activities and projects uh, that are changing corporate environment as well. Um, which consequences they suffer from? Fear of being fired, robbed, for their intellectual property every, each and every day. They are af afraid from being arrested, and I will share with you one case about that. Uh, censored in so many ways and so on. You know, um, famous political blogger from Croatia, Marko Rakar, a few years ago revealed on his blog that that in Croatia uh, on electoral list, that's a list of all uh, citizens eligible to vote, um, that on that list uh, in Croatia you have uh, around half a million ghost voters. You know, in a country like that, which is a small country with vulnerable economies and with vulnerable de de democracies, uh, it's a huge thing to have 20% ghost voters at any point. So any political party could win, uh, and you cannot have democratic elections in, in, in system like that. And that guy, that blogger, announced, revealed all the information about ghost voters and what politicians are doing 
each and every uh, elections. And of course, he was threatened. Of course, he was arrested. Those were very hard days for Marco. Uh, but at the end, you know, um, Croatia changed their election law. And now they are so much more democratic society than, than, than they were. And we are proud of that. But, you know, we need to have more, um, more bloggers like Marco who are brave enough who are, who are determined enough and uh, who will help us to change our societies. You know, I really think it's important for all of us because, in a way, if we have strong democratic countries, we can have strong democratic region. And if we have strong and democratic region, we can have strong and democratic Europe. That's simply important for all of us. And that's why I think this story could be interesting uh, for you as well. But first of all, I wanted to share this with you and to ask from you advices and ideas or whatever you have uh, in order to make that, that blogosphere and eventually our country is a better place for all of us. We started some things, you know. Um, Bloggers' Rights uh, is our uh, non-government organization. Uh, last year, we started with, with Bloggers' Rights, and um, we plan to build four strong pillars for blogosphere. First of all, to somehow build economical uh, independence and to self-employ our, our bloggers, because, of course, if they are economically independent, they will be um, empowered to blog uh, more freely or more frequently. Uh, then uh, to provide to all our blog bloggers legal support for not just intellectual property, but for different uh, issues they uh, might suffer from. Um, and networking um, is something that is very important because they are almost always connected with their own social circle, not with wider blogosphere. So if they communicate with uh, different bloggers, not just in our region, but here in Germany or in Europe or in Asia, or wide, you know, they can understand how bloggers think and they can exchange uh, experiences and, and uh, that can empower them as well. And of course, education, how to write, uh, how to find motivation and inspiration and how to create analytical posts and to go deeper and to analyze and question even better and so on. So that's something we, we do at the moment. And if you have any kind of idea or whatever, please, uh, please share that with me. Uh, I will really, really appreciate. And at the end, you know, um, are you alone? Are, are we alone? My question was always, am I alone or we all, uh, are all one in a way? In so many ways, if you ask me. Uh, we cannot um, have strong region or, or continent or union, whatever, if we don't have strong, small particles and pieces of that picture. So I truly believe that we are all one and that if we make a better country, we will have a better region, we will have a better Europe, and so on. So um, it's important for us to share this story with you, because when you hear things about uh, our country, you will know that there are some people over there who are fighting to make things better for themselves, for their citizens, and for all citizens in all countries in, in this European soil. And I would like to ask you to help us to stand for them, like Rock the Blog did. We are very grateful for this opportunity and hope to bring so much better news for you next year and in upcoming years. Thank you very much for this opportunity. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank I you, think we, we have time for one or two questions. Do we have any questions? Oh, yeah, over there. I came a little bit too late. Uh, making the people self-employed, especially for Germany or other uh, high-level uh, countries, not the solution because this makes the people totally uh, off rights. They don't have any rights anymore. You can do with it what they want. So if they are self-employed, they even have to ask, oh, may I blog your mind, your opinions to get money for a contract for a few bucks. And then the company said, well, if, you, if we would uh, hire you, we What's have that? to pay uh, X, but plus social welfare. So we hire you for X 
divided by two or whatever, or even by X, but you have to uh, make your insurance and your uh, social welfare by yourself. So uh, the, the income uh, doesn't increase and the situation doesn't um, make it better for self-employed if, if they have just few customers. So a dentist or lawyer has many customers, but a blogger or engineer who is self-employed has just one or two customers. Yeah, thank you very much for, for your, actually, for your note. But uh, in my opinion, there are many opportunities for bloggers to be self-employed and to uh, earn thanks to their knowledge and their blogger experience. For example, most of them are great in copywriting. Then they can help companies to brand themselves and, and to advocate for them in different ways uh, throughout some campaigns or projects. CSR campaigns, for example, and so on. So I think that bloggers uh, could work different things. And in our research, we saw that around 20% of bloggers actually, in a way, live from their blogs, Darryl. from promoted posts and that kind of stuff. And that's uh, average, you know, it, uh, the amount of their, their, their earnings are average payment uh, in Serbia. So that's, that's uh, good enough. We just need to take a good care of them in order to show them all their all, all possibilities and risks they can suffer from. And that's why I think one strong institution can help them. But, but good, good note, thank you. I'll remember that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.